You know, most Fire Emblem characters have a pretty good reason to join the main lord's army. Sometimes they're just their retainers and obviously they are duty bound to protect them. Other times they are hired by the hero to assist them, like the dozens of mercenary groups willing to work for a fee. Sometimes these motivations are more personal. Bandits want to reform themselves and fight for good. Everyday people want to enlist in the war effort to try to do their part to end tyranny. Usually this goal makes sense and is not stupid. But there are some characters in the 500 something total cast of all the games whose motivations are weird, random, and not really a good reason to join an army and risk your life for. Who are these characters? In this list, I'm going to name off my top most hilariously dumb character recruitments in no particular order, spanning from wow, really? to wow, really? Why am I Let's here? begin. Roger from Shadow Dragon. Roger is the first of many lads on this list who will join the army because they get charmed into leaving their side and joining their enemy. Roger is a soldier of Grust who is currently at war with Talus. Sheeta, the princess of Talus who is currently at war with Grust, sees him on the battlefield and walks up to him and strikes up a conversation about love, if he believes in love and about how tragic and sad the war is, and about all the many women and children who shed tears every day as this war drags on. Roger agrees with her sentiment, and then Sheeta asks him to join her side. Roger hard disagrees, saying he could never betray his kingdom, so Sheeta pumps the gas on convincing him. Alright, sorry to bother you, but I'm glad we had this chance to talk, Roger. You're every bit the man I thought you were. Goodbye then. Wait, you're leaving? Well, yes, Roger. I must. Every moment I stay here, I put you at risk. What if your comrades thought you were conspiring with the enemy? No. I must go. Who else is picturing Sheeta walking away then dramatically looking back as her grusty and night fades into the distance? Well, it's enough for Roger to betray his country. Overwhelmed with emotion, Sheeta successfully recruits old Raj. He follows up with Marth in a hilarious conversation which has Roger admitting that he thinks he's in love with her. Try saying no to a girl who comes racing up to you in the heat of battle just to ask if you believe in love. Woo! I must have turned red as a strawberry. <laughs> Imagine throwing away all of your loyalty and pride as a knight of Grust just because a girl gave you attention. Oh, what's this? Is that FE4 calling? I apologize for butchering this name, but Yukar is the middle son of Duke Dinan of Dozil. He served his father in the Grand Vale occupation of Isaac, presiding over Isaac Castle. He came into conflict with his family over the rise of Celeste's Liberation Army and Isaac, or rather over Larce and Radney, one of its warriors. Yukar's personality is a romantic, but he's also madly head over heels with Larce, or Radney, her substitute. His brother, Yukarba, also has feelings for those ladies, and depending on who you talk to, you will recruit one while leading to defeat the other. Sounds fine. Where Yuhar gets put on this list though, and his brother doesn't, are their reasons to leave. Yuharba has a lot of misgivings about his father's inaction, while the Lopto sect just walks over him, kidnapping children and generally just being assholes. While he has feelings for her, he makes it clear that he has legitimate reasons to stand up to the injustice of his own father and wants to make amends. Yuhar doesn't really do that. He talks to Larce and starts rambling about how beautiful she is and how his love for her surpasses all. And in hindsight, I really missed the chance to talk about Yuhar being the actual prototype Sane. They even look the same, but I digress. At first glance, he seems to just join because he wants to get with her, but more deeply, as seen in his battle quote with Brian, the eldest brother, he wants to restore the good name of House Dozel. If it weren't for Larsay and Radney though, I wonder if he'd make the switch. Azel. Azel is the unfortunately footlocked mage you get in the prologue of FE4. He's also the brother of Arvis, who definitely doesn't want his little brother getting involved in this army and explicitly told him to stay home. Azel claims he is here because he wants to help Sigurd defend against the Verdonite invasion, although that's just what he claims. Lex, his best friend, who is also on this list by the way, calls out his intent. We both know there's more to it than that. Come on, Azel. What's the real reason we're here? I have no idea what you mean. 
It's that Lady Adine from Jungby, isn't it? Come on, everybody knows you like her. You just came for her sake, didn't you? Sigurd hasn't even met Azel before, and so it's pretty easy to believe that Azel mainly just wants to find Adine. Which is... Fine, I guess. Personally, I wouldn't join a war I'm not supposed to join because I have a crush on a girl. It could be more silly, though. It could be Lex. Lex joins the war effort because Azel is his best friend and he couldn't let him go at it alone. While I'm sure there's some part of Lex that wanted to help keep his country safe from Ferdane, he makes it clear that he's not even here for Sigurd. It's for his friend, and he just wanted to help. These Yugdral guys are nuts. Speaking of Yugdral, we're not done with Yugdral just yet. Homer is the horniest and sleaziest guy on this list. While Roger is a man desperate for love, and Azel is a nice kid with a heart of gold, Homer is found in Tara, half a bottle deep, during a battle, drunk, and hitting on every woman he sees, until he meets Nana. After dropping, possibly, the most sleaziest line, Nana slaps him in the face and goes off on him, calling him out being drunk before lunchtime. She even starts to cry, she's so upset. Feeling bad that he made Nana cry, he joins the army. That's it. If anyone else talks to him, he tells them to go away, or that he would bang them if he could, but he needs to rest to save for a long night of what I would assume to be a bunch of sex. He could have just apologized and, you know, been on his way, but nope, off to fight in the city to make up for his horniness. The funny thing is he doesn't even chat with Nana after this. He's just here now, being a light mage. Now let's take a break from the Kaga games, which we will return to later, and talk about Western Fire Emblem's most silly recruitments. So who's next? The champion of boredom himself, Geats. Geats is a guy who aimlessly wanders around Elib. He has no purpose in life and is bored all the time. When you see him in Four Fang Defense Linus Edition, he just steps outside and is like, hmm, this looks cool. I wonder who is on the right side though. Guess I'll fight and find out. Then, when Dart talks to him, he legit joins because he's bored. He's bored and wants to not be bored. That is a reason to join a fight. Like if it weren't for Dart, Geats would straight up just get killed because he had nothing better to do that day. In truth, Geats is a wanderer trying to find a purpose in life after he discovered that his merchant father whom he idolized enslaved children to work in the galleys of his ship. But still, can't say that joining up in a fight of which you have no idea it's about, what is at stake, or even who is on the right side, is that good of a reason. But maybe that's just me. Stefan. This guy? He is weird. So for those who don't know who Stefan is, he is a branded character, which means you are half Laguz, half Bjork, and he is a direct descendant of Soen, the mega crazy lion, which means he has very, very good genetics. But being a branded, he has been exiled from many social circles, and him and his Grand Desert fellow brandeds have sort of established a society that welcomes their own kind. First of all, you can only recruit him if you are Mordecai or Leaf and you stand on a particular tile to trigger his conversation. When you speak to him with a Bjork character or Soren, he will only give you the bag Kadi. Second, during the recruitment conversation itself, he literally offers to join Mordecai or Leaf so he can end the battle and get to know them a little better. Pretty cavalier reason to join, but Stefan is kind of the greatest of all time, so it's not really a problem for him. It gets even more comedic in the base conversation with Ike, when Ike straight up asks him, who are you and when did you even join the army? Stefan isn't even fond of Laguz or Bjork. He doesn't really have a reason to fight with Ike besides seeing him develop his swordsmanship, but even then, Ike can just refuse his training. He kinda just fucks around the entire time. It is later learned that joining this army might serve as an opportunity to help realize his ambition to create an independent nation of branded so they could thrive. But Stefan is so elusive that his goal isn't conveyed at all even in his supports. Without playing Radiant Dawn, you wouldn't really have a clear understanding of what Stefan even wants here. He doesn't like Laguz or Bjork that much, and seems content within the Grand Desert branded sanctuary. But I mean... He's legendarily strong, so it's not like he's really putting himself in harm's way. 
I don't know. It's pretty silly. Continuing with Tellius, let's talk about Oliver. Oliver is such a weird character. He's not a good person. He's a racist, narcissist, piece of shit who participated in Lagoo's slave trading. He deems most Lagoos as subhuman and really only values the Lagoos royals, the bird tribe, and especially herons. As a senior member of the Benyon Senate, he kind of represents the absolute worst of what Bjorks can be. He's the boss in the four-part chapter 17 of Path of Radiance and makes a return in Radiant Dawn 4-4 in the Tower of Guidance. He stays an enemy for Benyon unless he sees Raphael, another harem. He is so in awe of his beauty that he switches sides under the rationale that Oliver is a defender of beauty. And because Raphael is beautiful, he must be protected. The senior member of the Senate straight up pieces out and joins Ike's army. It's so bizarre and off-putting that when Ike finds out about this, he asks him to leave and go back to the enemy. The other Senate members, when they see him again, are shocked and confused that he is fighting against them now. Despite the team switch, he's still a piece of shit. And this isn't really a redemption arc. So, I guess you do you, Oliver. Remember when we'd go back to... Arcnea? Well, I know I talked about this in my FE3 video, but I cannot talk about hilarious and weird character recruitments and not leave out the greatest recruitments ever. I am not done raving about BSFE. As a really quick breakdown of BSFE Fire Emblem, it was a short four chapter long Fire Emblem game that was only available at select times in the year through the Super Famicom broadcast Satellaview periphery. The four chapters of BSFE were always under time because the broadcasts of the chapters themselves were on air for a couple of hours or so per chapter. I know I'm not really clearly explaining this, but just watch my video in the card on the top right. The point is, the four chapters were time attacks. Defeat as many enemies, unlock and visit as many chests and villages respectively for points until the timer runs out. But even in a four chapter long game, with chapters being standalone in story and characters, three characters are recruitable, Frost, Malice, and Dice. How do you recruit them? You literally let 30 minutes of real life pass, and the next turn, Frost will join you. There is no text, no story reason for him to do this, he just does. And it's 15 minutes for Malice and Dice. They opted not to have them join via talk conversation. I guess maybe in the interest of the nature of the BSFE chapters and game, but I just love the sheer randomness of this. I don't know why. I can't really explain to you why I find this so humorous. I just get a kick out of legit 30 minutes passing, and then these characters are like, yeah, here we go. <laughs> in Fire Emblem 12, they do end up giving story justifications for them joining, but nothing is going to personally beat these recruitments for me. Actually, there could be one thing that beats this, the tutorial units in Path of Radiance. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the absolute dumbest reasons to join an army video that I just talked about. If you did enjoy this and you like scripted Fire Emblem content just like this, I would really appreciate it if you left a like and commented down below on your favorite recruitment conversation. There were some characters who I thought about adding, but ultimately, even though they were silly recruitment conversations, they made sense. Hugh from FE6 being a candidate or a, I guess, honorable mention here. Besides that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like these short form scripted videos that I'm doing more often than usual on my channel, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed to show me that, that this is stuff that you're enjoying. With that being said, hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.